um, event is much harder than um, forecasting any other event. The droughts are uh, a normal part of the climate variability. I mean, it's then in, uh, in certain areas, or actually sometimes it's like an extreme event in normal areas which are not arid. It's um, like, for example, um, a certain area would, would, um, um, would face a drought uh, uh, for one time on a sudden. The negative impacts of droughts are, uh, in some countries, can equal or even exceed the socio-economic damages of floods. Usually, people are more afraid of flash floods or floods uh, in general because it um, um, damage houses and uh, and agriculture. Also, also drought can do uh, all of that. People are sometimes forced to immigrate from their lands because of the lack of water and lack of uh, livestock. Droughts are um, often classified into four types, a meteorological, agricultural, hydrological, and socioeconomic droughts. The meteorological droughts, uh, by, um, it's caused by negative deviation of long-term um, long precipitation, as I said, from uh, the normal, um, normal values. And the agricultural drought uh, caused by, uh, of course, um, it depends also on the lack of, uh, or the meteorological drought, and then we are facing soil lack moisture, and um, specific crops can, cannot have its needs of water uh, from soil moisture or from the precipitation. Then we are facing, like in the picture here, the, uh, the water demand for the, uh, for the crop cannot be faced and the, um, the planets are dying. The hydrological drought, uh, lack of sufficient surface and subsurface water supplies because of, uh, actually, um, some people are um, thinking that hydrological drought should be mentioned before, uh, metrolo um, before agriculture, but it also, um, the agricultural drought can, can cause the um, hydrological drought because the lack of uh, evapotranspiration for uh, large areas can, uh, can affect the um, level of water and surface water in, uh, in the water streams. Uh, some impacts of the drought are the, uh, uh, the drought produces a large number of impacts, uh, such as crop failure, which leads to uh, less income to farmers, uh, increased prices of food, uh, unemployment for large numbers of people, because uh, people who are working in agricultural field or um, any other field can be uh, um, um, sorry, affected by drought, can also be unemployed. And of course, as I said, migration for people, uh, especially in uh, poor communities and uh, small uh, rural communities, uh, will have to migrate and to look for food and more livestock. Uh, the reduced water levels for uh, different uses uh, as uh, intakes for the um, water stations uh, or uh, navigation or uh, also for um, hydropower uh, generation. All of these will be affected by drought and uh, um, uh, what, uh, reduced water levels. The increase of fire hazard because of the uh, arid environment which caused by drought uh, and the increase of livestock uh, death rates and wildlife of course death rates. Uh, conflicts over limited water resource and livestock and this also um, um, happens in uh, poor, uh, poor communities and uh, rural um, small communities. Non-structural drought mitigation tools. Uh, the, the, um, it's better to, uh, for the, uh, what we can say, it's like soft adaptation to the drought uh, can be done and can uh, decrease the damage caused by it uh, in certain values or in major values actually. For example, if you have a drought early warning system which is sufficient and good uh, and war can warn people in enough time to prepare for the drought coming, it will, it will help to decrease the, um, um, the damage caused by the drought. To, to have a uh, good and efficient early warning system, you should have, of course, an accurate weather forecast to uh, prepare for the lack of uh, precipitation and lack of water coming. 
the national uh, drought, uh, to have a national drought policy or strategy uh, for a uh, whole country to be prepared and have a certain uh, mitigation uh, measures or uh, plans and to have <coughs> and to develop a culture of resilience like for example to have uh, all the people trained to um, not all the people or mainly people in vulnerable and um, uh, um, p uh, places that are expected to have drought to be prepared and have the uh, knowledge enough and training enough to uh, deal with the, um, the drought event and of course to um, have the um, advisors like for example uh, here in Egypt we have um, uh, certain certain places when where uh, I mean uh, Anyways, uh, districts and uh, uh, small, um, non-central, I mean, to have people in non-central places, not only the government, the high levels, uh, the low levels also f uh, for people, to have alerts and alarms and warnings for people to learn them about the coming event, to be prepared for it. As long as you have a non-central system, uh, as it's, uh, the knowledge are widely um, um, exp uh, exp um, uh, widely, widely known, uh, the, the deal with it will be more uh, practical and e evaluate. Uh, for example, um, to, to make, uh, I mean, how to make an every water drop counts, we've learned that, uh, especially in Kenya, we've been in a field trip through our Defora project, and uh, the people there in a small community uh, have been made, making uh, water harvesting and learned to make uh, they have like um, one, uh, one or two seasons of rain and then the, he the, um, the whole, um, the rest of the year is arid and no water coming for them. But actually they learn to even make um, fish, uh, fish ponds uh, 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 with this uh, water. They are um, uh, making uh, small areas of, uh, for uh, uh, having livestock and vegetation and they are uh, wholly depending on themselves and have, the, um, uh, have this water to be really managed and uh, useful. Our Defora project has mainly been done to improve the drought early warning and forecasting to strengthen preparedness and adaptation to droughts in Africa. It's mainly a research project. It has been started on January 2011, and uh, duration of the project is, uh, is three years. With a total budget of 4.4 million euros and 18 partners from self, uh, 13 countries, European and African countries, uh, like Netherlands, uh, United Kingdom, uh, Spain, Kenya, uh, Egypt, and South Africa. Egypt has been represented in the project by the Ministry of Water Resource and Irrigation uh, with uh, two uh, main cent two uh, centers, uh, NPCBN and Nile Forecasting Center. The principal aim of the project is to develop a framework for the provision of early warning and response to mitigation to mitigate sorry the impact of droughts in Africa. Expressing an uh, anomaly events uh, is very good using NCS and uh, using NCS is easier to understand, comparable in space and time. For example, 60 millimeter rain anomaly is not the same everywhere, so using NCS is more uh, understandable. SPI, or Standardized Precipitation Index, uh, is developed at 1993. Actually, it's a simple index because it's depend only on the precipitation parameter, and it can express as probability of observed precipitation transformed into an index. Being used in research over over uh, 60 countries, and has the capability to give you a mul multiple time scales for one month, uh, three months, six months, and uh, 12 months. <coughs> Accumulated values for this index can be defined as the magnitude of this index. This index reflects the severity of the drought. Uh, to apply this index, you should ha have at least 30 years of records of rainfall precipitation. 
of continuous monthly precipitation data. Uh, and as we mentioned, this by time scale intervals uh, shorter than one month and longer than 24 months is maybe unreliable. Uh, SPI is a probability based probability of observed precipitation transformed into an index. Uh, and the nature is well studied, in, in the nature uh, of this index is well suited to risk management by decision makers, of course. How this index works? The method of calculation includes the following steps. First, you, you have uh, the step of data preparation. By generation, a time series of a precipitation value of interest is generated, at least, as we mentioned, at least 30 years of data uh, should be needed or needed. The second step is to determine our determination of the probability frequency distribution that statistically fits the time series, your time series of data, of precipitation data, fitting this time series with a suitable probability frequency of distribution. The third step is to calculate the accumulated prob accumul probability distribution from the fitted frequency distribution. And the final step is to transform or transformation of the frequency distribution to the normal or Gaussian fre frequency distribution. Normalization here is very important to achieve the standardiz st standard or standardization uh, among uh, different regions with a different climatology. So we can use the same index from different regions with different climatology. How to compute simply SPI is calculated by taking the difference of the precipitation from the mean of the particular time scale at least 30 years and then divided by the standard deviation. Uh, this is actually the SPI values which reflect uh, the, 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 the extreme or the, the, the magnitude of the event which occurred. Uh, 20, uh, if I have SPI value 20 index, so we have an extremely wet event. Uh, 1.5 to 1.99, very wet. Up to minus two, extremely dry. Uh, this is shown by this table. Our approach, or the used approach in Nile Forecast Center, uh, drought in seas are typically signal numbers that are calculated <coughs> using observed and proxy data. For assessing the meteorological drought, our approach is to use, uh, to apply the standard uh, uh, SPI to different rainfall data sets. It's uh, 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 to measure or to, ass to assess its applicability in the study area. In addition, it will be applied to a several climate change scenarios to evaluate the possibility or the possible future, future change in drought risks. We have three uh, data sets represent historical uh, rainfall to assess the usage of SBI index, and we have climate change scenarios which project the climate in the up to uh, 2050. Historical and future meteorological drought occurrence over the Eastern Nile subcatchment is assessed through calculating SPI. Uh, for historical rainfall, uh, we use three data sets. We will explain uh, all these data sets now. And for future rainfall, uh, we have an ensemble of six uh, regional climate model using pre model simulations for the period 2021 up to 2050. Our observed rainfall data sets, which we used, crew data, uh, climate research unit, and uh, ERA 40, which uh, represent uh, reanalysis data uh, for the, the globe, and uh, a gauge satellite merged rainfall uh, data set produced by the Nile Forecast Center, uh, which starts from 1992. For the RCM simulations, the precise regional climate model system, uh, we have uh, used uh, up to now uh, PRECI model. Uh, it's a regional climate model, dynamic, dynamic downscaling model, uh, 
produced or developed by UK Met Office, uh, Hadley Center in UK. Uh, after uh, running uh, this uh, model, uh, results from GCM were all derived from one emission scenario. What happened, we already have six uh, global circulation model results uh, uh, using one emission scenario. And, and uh, these uh, GCMs uh, are run using the PC. The baseline, uh, the baseline simulation from 1961 up to 1990, this is control period, and the future period from 2021 20, up to 2050. We have selected six scenarios out of 17 quantifying uh, ensemble 